three students. One conversation where film theory collides with the reality of filmmaking. Life after film school. Today's guest, Eliza Dushku, star and producer of the Fox series Dollhouse. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eliza. Thank you. And we always start off the show with the same first question. Please finish the following sentence. The most important thing somebody should know before graduating from film school is... I have no idea. I hope you get good answers from other people <laughs> because I, I never went to film school. So I don't really know. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Most people say persistence. Yeah. Persistence. Preparation, preparation, preparation. That's always an answer to most questions that I ask when I want to sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> but you started really young. Yeah. And your first time you were 10 years old? Yeah, I went, I went on my first audition when I was nine, actually. What was that first time on set like? On set? Um, on my first film, I was kind of a terror. I remember we were shooting in Baltimore and it was a period movie and there were all these old cars and they would leave the keys in the ignition and you would hear over the radio like, God, Eliza's driving a car through the shot in the background. <laughs> and I was like, just kind of tearing it up. I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, let's steal the cars. Your next role was as Pearl in This Boy's Life, alongside yes. Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. And you've been quoted as saying that that experience really opened doors for you. Well, how so? It's Robert De Niro. <laughs> he yeah. opens doors. Um, he, I, I had the pleasure of working with him twice, thank God, because the first time I, I had no idea who he was. And so I just sort of was still running around a little bit, like, you know, kicking people in the shins and going, who are you? But um, he was he was just, he was really intense. He was really great. He was paternal and, and fun to watch and scary to watch. It was definitely different from the, you know, sort of G-rated first film that I did. And it turned out really well and it was regarded as a serious and, and good film. Well, then you did a major studio production, True Lies, mm -hmm. with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis, and of yeah. course, directed by James Cameron. Jim Cameron, that's so right. So we assume that this was probably your first exposure to an action-intensive film. Was that yeah. challenging? Yeah. It was fun for me. I just, I dove right in. That's sort of always been, been my motto is like, you know, go big or go home. I mean, if the boys are doing it. I want to do it, I can do it, and I can do it better. And uh, I had all these, you know, big stunt guys and, and um, Arnold, and he, he always approached everything with sort of a no-fear attitude. So we hopped in this Harrier jet, you know, on the top of a Miami Savings Bank, 25 stories high, and, and they wired me in, and that it was just sort of, it, the fear wasn't really real. It was for my mother, but <laughs> for me, it was just sort of like, this is great, like a giant jungle gym. But apparently you broke some ribs during the filming of those jet scenes? I did. Strangely enough, after four weeks on top of the building, it was back in L.A. at the set, at, inside the, the studio, and um, the cockpit gets shot up by, you know, our, our terrorist. And I'm hanging on to the front, and when he flips him off and fires him off the missile and through the building, Arnold kind of does one of these to me, and I was on this side, and they flipped it, and I landed on the broken plexiglass, and broke my ribs and fell off and Arnold sent me a go pad as a get well present wow. which I got ended up getting hit by a car on <laughs> later that year but it was a nice thought. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it like working with James Cameron and did any of his you know directing methods stick with you? He was so nice to me and he could be hard with other people. He was hard working no doubt and knew how to do every single person's job on the set so if a take went wrong he could get on a bullhorn and he would single out whoever had messed up the shot and oh, yeah. <laughs> give them, you know, give them a really, a really stern um, reprimand. But he's great with me. So education was actually really important to you and you went back to your senior and junior year of high school to finish and then mm -hmm. you graduated and you got into a couple colleges but you decided to go back to acting instead of attend. What made you decide to do that? 
Joss Whedon. <laughs> um, my mother is a political science professor at Suffolk University in Boston, so she always saw, you know, my doing a few films as just sort of a, a, a luck thing. And Jamie Lee Curtis also emphasized, you have to have a plan B. You need to go to school and you need to have something so that you never feel, um, you know, like there, like you're not good at anything else. And, and it's because it's obviously a really hard business. So I was enrolled, I had a basic liberal arts, um, you know, program set up and I had my dorm room in Boston and with a view of the Boston Common and I was all ready to go and I and I made a tape for um, for Buffy and uh, and Joss brought me out to LA for what was supposed to be three episodes and it turned into the season. Speaking of Buffy, uh -huh. um, you played Faith in a total of five years on the show. When we're supposed to be five years? Wow, it flew. Yeah, <laughs> and it was a pivotal role in your career. Um, yes. That was also your first time on television. How was it different from your experiences on film? It was just like, Immediately, the writing, you know, it's, they always say if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. Like, the writing was always, obviously, something different, something clever, sharp, smart, feminist. But that was the first time I was also sort of a sexual, you know, little thing. And I was sort of, like, putting on these leather pants and, like, and fighting and being physical. And there were th things about that that were great. There were things about that that were a little bit... Scary. I was still 17. I had just graduated high school and I was sort of out in LA on my own. But yeah, Joss really, really held my hand and really taught me so much just from that point on. You mentioned that you were only written to be in the first few episodes, but you ended up being on the show for five years. Um, how did that happen? We clicked. We all kind of clicked and, and the, the part was, was working and the dynamics were working and, and um, I was a kamikaze fighter you know I was like if they can do it, if some people can do it let me do it I don't want to see you know when I'm watching the show so stuntable fly through frame I want to get in there and when I started doing some of the stunts I heard Sarah started doing some more of her stunts and so <laughs> then there were these five page stunt scenes between Sarah and I that were coming out and we were like really going in there and tagging each other left and right so again Joss just turned it out and, and it was so effective that we carried it on and carried it on and I withdrew from school and moved out to LA permanently and kept coming back. So Faith appeared in Buffy's spin-off series Angel and when both shows ended you were actually offered uh, your own show as Faith but you turned it down. Why? It was very, it was so close to Buffy we would always sort of be compared like you know right on top of each other to that show and I had sort of been doing Faith for five years. Is that what you told me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For five years, and it was sort of, I, I made a decision to do, to do another show, which I'm glad I did, because I mean, if I, if I spent my life always looking at what I should have done or could have done, um, if the things wouldn't have, you know, we may not be here today. The dollhouse would probably not absolutely have been here. Nothing is what it appears to be. It seems pretty clear to me. Because you're only seeing part of it. I'm talking about a clean slate. You ever try and clean an actual slate? You always see what was on it before. In 2007, you signed a deal with Fox Television to develop shows that you would then star in. And mm -hmm. before anything was even in development, you made a call to Joss Whedon. And you guys met for lunch. What mm -hmm. did you guys talk about? And is that when Dollhouse came into... Creation. There were a lot of reasons I wanted to return to television, so I, I met with Fox and some of the people there, and I had a lot of great friends from, from Buffy and from True Calling, and we talked about what might be a good role for me in a, in a place that I could sort of showcase my, my raging ADD and, and sort of my, um, you know, myself in, in the right ways. And my, I guess in my mind, I, I thought of calling Joss <laughs> and... Uh, but he was pretty pretty clear that he didn't want to return to television. But I, he, I knew that he would give me advice and I knew that he would sort of help me talk through it at least, at the very least. So I asked him to lunch about two weeks after I secured my development deal and um, four hours into lunch, he came back from the bathroom and was like, the show will be called Dollhouse. Now I have to drive home and tell my wife that I just committed to a show. So, lucky me. 
in Dollhouse, you play mm -hmm. Echo, who is a young woman, a part of an organization, and she gets her mind and personality all wiped out and uh, imprinted with a new one to, mm -hmm. fill, to fulfill assignments. Yes. So Engagements. Engagements. <laughs> and the, so as an active, you play pretty much a new role every single week, and you said you relate your life to that. I can explain how. When we were talking about my life and all the different you know sort of masks that I wear in my life and sort of waking up and and being a different person every day or, or playing a different role you know I, I had done over 20 movies and you know through my through my adolescence and into my early 20s and there was a part of me that was like who the hell am I like who you know I, I'm, I could be a chameleon in my life I could I could be the tough girl from Boston and Joss Joss saw that that's how the the concept, you know, started to started to form, and so I followed him right in. As scary as <laughs> and, and exciting as it was. Now the actives you play span a very wide range: mm -hmm. midwives, pop stars, game hunting tomboys. I got married last week. Really? On the show. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like, was a bride. Well, they all have distinct nuances, and some even speak different languages. Mm -hmm. So how do you develop each character, and do you and Joss ever? create backstories to help you? We do. Um, it starts with the great writing. It's all, these, these scripts come in and the characters are on the page in, in very deep ways. Um, then we have, you know, just unbelievable costume designer, hair, makeup people. Um, there's just, it's such a team over there. And the, the goal is then to sort of create this skin for me to find a way into and, and then fill in sort of the, fill in the world around her and uh, it's fun for me. Like people ask me if it's maddening or if it's, you know, really difficult. I grew up sort of mimicking people and traveling around the world and hearing different people's stories and and um, my mother always sort of, you know, had us with with just people from all different walks of life and, and I could watch and, and mimic and so we just, I, I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been an active that was especially challenging to become? Um, Joss makes fun of me because he he thinks I have a deep problem. <laughs> He's like, I can throw you off a building. I can run you over in a, with a car, crash you on a motorcycle, but I put your hair in an updo and you freak out. Like, see, there's something deeply wrong with you. Um, he's like, your comfort lies in your, in your hair and I'm gonna take you out of your comfort zone as much as I can in this, in this show. So when I played Margaret um, in the Haunted episode, I had to do a little bit extra work because it was just, I felt like I was wearing someone else's head. I just, and, and it affected everything. Um, on top of playing, you know, an, a, a woman 15 years older than, my, than I am, um, that was hard. Well, I thought the blind episode was going to be harder than it was. It was actually, like, very, um, like, comforting. And there was something really, like, mm -hmm. mystical about doing all of these scenes as this blind cult member and my eyes were wide open but I wasn't focusing on anyone you know looking at anyone and I, I loved it. I really want to thank you for going out of your way. It's not as far out of my way as you might think. I admire your courage hitchhiking across country. Because I'm blind? Nah, because you're a girl. I'm a girl? Wow, I've been blind longer than I thought. Do I hear a smile? You do. In every show, after you've been wiped, you wake up and you mm -hmm. say, did I fall asleep? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of become the catchphrase for the show. And you mm -hmm. sometimes deliver it multiple times in a single episode. How do you continually deliver that line and make it feel real and not flat? I did it just last night, and I did it different than I think I've ever done it before. Um, there's, there's so many ways to say anything, you know, I don't think we ever say anything the same way twice. Mm -hmm. Looking around and looking at the different people in the room or looking at the, um, at anything will, will give you, I think, a, a little bit of a different, a different version. Hello, Echo. How are you feeling? Did I fall asleep? For a little while. Shall I go now? If you like. As you've mentioned, you're also a producer on the show. What does that entail? Joss was really clear going into this that he needed me to be 
my we needed to be teammates that he needed sort of to be able to trust me that I was not gonna lose my marbles that I was not gonna be a freaking diva that I was not